research to pertaining to sandalwood cultivation. They have the largest sandalwood plantations established. They only started planting it about 20 years ago. And if you think about how long sandalwood has existed in the international marketplace, for it to only have been cultivated in a commercial scale 20 years ago is kind of mind blowing. And uh, so what they've found out is that the best hosts are nitrogen fixing trees. And um, so lucky for us, the two most common trees in our forest are nitrogen fixers. And so that would be the mamane, and this is actually more like a tree shrub. It grows like a shrub until it's mature and then it'll start to form a singular trunk and it'll turn into a tree form. And then this one and this one, these are the koa tree. And this is the tree that you'll see predominantly around you, surrounding you. And so you'll notice they have a similar like leaf structure, the bipinnate leaf structure, and that is very characteristic of nitrogen fixing plants. And um, another characteristic of nitrogen fixers is that they produce bean pods. So these are mamane bean pods, and those are the beans inside. And these are koa bean pods. And oh, those are the koa, the, the koa seeds that lay within them. And so I'm gonna take you through here and give you a brief uh, description of these plants that we work with. And um, Hawaii's forests are, are special because they evolved in isolation. And because of that, our species diversity is very low. If you were to uh, survey an acre of our forest, you'd probably find half of these species. If you were to survey an acre of forest just about anywhere else, you'd find much more than that. And uh, that's just a product of our isolation. Not many things made it here. And um, when they did, uh, you know, they just diversified into their niches. And so that's why a lot of things that evolved here don't occur anywhere else. They come here, they evolve here, they can't get back to where they came from. And um, so all of these are endemic to Hawaii. They're only found here. <clears throat> so the first one is Pomane. And so I'm gonna tell you a little fun characteristic about each one. So Momane, uh, Latin name Sephora chrysophylla, is the sole food source for the palila bird. The palila is one of our most endangered forest birds we have here. We used to have hundreds of species of colorful little birds, forest birds, before um, Westerners came and brought um, diseases. Um, mostly is avian malaria is the biggest one that killed the most birds. And so out of our hundreds of species, we have about 20 species left now. And um, this is the sole food source for the palila. And so the palila only exists in one small forest on Mauna Kea, but there have been talks of expanding the population, translocating it to other habitats that are suitable. And one of the main criteria for, for determining a suitable habitat is the food source especially if it's the sole food source. And so this area within our project and surrounding our project has experienced some of the best Mamane regeneration in the state. And they've been looking at areas around here to translocate populations of that bird because there's a lot of food for it here. And so this is, could be a very valuable species in the future of um, bringing this species, of restoring the populations of this really rare bird. So the koa tree is the most common tree that we have here and it does this really funny thing where it, it, uh, it decides that it doesn't like le these leaves anymore and then it starts to make these. Oh. And so what these are are called phyloids and they are actually a modified botany again, petiole. So here's the leaf. The leaf has several parts. These are leaflets. The part of the leaf that connects the leaf to the plant that's called the petiole. And so the koa tree has evolved so that its petioles, you see this one is starting, it's an intermediate form, will eventually turn into the photosynthetic uh, mechanisms of the tree. So a mature koa tree doesn't have any leaves on it. These are leaves. These are petioles. And so these are an evolutionary trait to give it some advantages. And um, one of the main advantages is that it um, holds water a lot better than the other leaves. And um, so if you look at the way the leaves are oriented, they're oriented like this. And so what that does is it catches fog. 
every day we get a fog bank that comes through here and when the fog bank hits that leaf the broad side it condenses and it drips down to the tip and so this tree will literally water itself if we have a fog bank coming through we don't need vertical precipitation we just get horizontal precipitation and then it'll pull it all out and water itself and you'll go into some of the driest parts of our forest and under all the core trees it's wet dry everywhere else yeah, and so cool. it's a very highly evolved leaf and in addition by orienting that way it actually lets a lot of light through to the understory and so it allows for a really healthy understory growth it produces an extremely beautiful wood a lot of character a lot of different color shades and they're finding it um, really good for uh, making guitars actually mm -hmm. Taylor guitars is the largest guitar manufacturer in the country and they have a um, arrangement with Kamehameha schools very similar to ours where they sustainably harvest koa trees and then they um, commercialize it by making them into guitars and then they put that land back into managing the forest which they harvested from.